Hello friends, and welcome to today's episode of me, Self-Critical Automaton, playing Dark Souls. I'm sure you're all familiar with it by now. Um, yeah, so... Now that we have done the unforgivable and murdered an innocent dog, um... <laughs> there is one Lord Vessel... one Lord Soul left to recover to... oh wait, I should be human. Uh, to feed to the Lord Vessel. I'm not sure if I've talked about what the Lord Vessel is. I don't think I have. Um, but, um, actually, <laughs> okay, so this is kind of complicated. Basically, there's a character you only meet if you don't give, go with Frampt to place the Lord Vessel. And I can't remember if I did that on this playthrough or not, and there's no real way for me to check. So, <laughs> Because if I didn't, and I go talk to him, it'll lock me into to doing that. So what I'm going to have to do is proceed through, beat the Four Kings, and then see if that character shows up. And if he doesn't show up, then I will talk about his stuff. And if he does show up, you know, he can talk about it himself. Uh, regardless, the Lord Vessel is the big basin that... Um, do you know, I think I did place it. Um, but I'm not sure. It's the big basin that... Um, that Guinevere gave us when we went to Anor Londo, and uh, charged us with charged us with <laughs> getting really tongue-tied today. I am still not very well, so <laughs> should we check in with uh, Rickert of Vinheim? It's been a while since we saw him. Hello, Mr. Cage. Hey, hang on. Is that a sorcery ember? Oh, I've never seen one like that. Not even back in Vinheim. What a brilliant flame. Please, friend, let me have that eye. I'm a craftsman of Vinheim. I'm, go I'm just going to skip, yeah. Oh, a weapon to... Yeah, he's not actually going to forge a weapon to make a legend out of me. Basically, that just lets you... That gives him another upgrade path, um, which is enchanted, which is like the magic upgrade path, but more better. I think it just has better scaling. Um... And it, it, maybe it's flat damage is better. Oh! Uh, actually, in the later games, it would be... Is that...? <gasps> I forgot all about this! Recognise him? I recognise him. You should recognise him too. Because that, my friends, is the Crestfallen Knight. Seems he's more than just Crestfallen. He has com gone completely hollow. And, uh... It did not... <laughs> It did not uh, do him any favours with regards to his uh, combat skills, apparently. So yeah, this is New Londo. And um, the role of Londo is interesting. Uh, you know, what is Londo? What does it mean? Um, well, we'll find out what happened here and why it's full of water as we go along. But um, yeah, because Anor Londo Anor means sunlight, incidentally. Anor Londo is the grand city of the gods, up in up in the sunlight at the top of the uh, the top of the mountain. New Londo is down here. So, what's the connection between Londo and New Londo? These are ghosts, incidentally. I hate ghosts. They are intangible. You can only hit them if you are cursed, because ghosts are, ghosts are cursed. I think in some way. Um, and uh, apparently the curse of being undead is insufficient cursedness to be able to touch ghosts. Um, if you see someone in a pot, you should smash it open, because, you know, loot. So, the desc item description for the transient curse is pretty great. It basically says that the easiest way to get cursed, if you want to get cursed for whatever reason, is to interfere with um, interfere with a corpse. Um, specifically, in this instance, oh dear, this might kill me. There's quite a few of them. Specifically, in this instance, by um, cutting off its arm. Basically, if you molest a corpse in some way, you get cursed, and um, the curse seems to be embodied by that severed arm. So when you use a transient curse, you're literally just like 
you know, rubbing a severed arm all over yourself, being like, yeah, I, I, I cut this off a corpse. No respect for the dead, me. Um, yeah. So, oh shit. Yeah, there's a basically inv almost invisible path under the water there. It's really easy to fall down. Now, one of the really frustrating things about New Londo is it has no bonfires. Why does it have no bonfires? Because it's literally underwater. Uh, which means that we have to run back from the, uh, the Firelink bonfire every time. We will unlock some shortcuts because this is Dark Souls and Dark Souls is all about uh, shortcuts, but for the time being, I'm going be to gonna have to be sprinty, sprinty, sprint, sprint. <coughs> yeah, um, so, what was I talking about? So yeah, Anor Londo, New Londo, and the Undead Berg. It's, you know, New Londo implies that it's created after Anor Londo, because it's New Londo. I apologise if there's any loud bangs or anything, there's some building work going on outside. Um, yeah, so... Oh, I forgot to make myself human, that's, uh, that's irritating. Anyway... So, yeah. New Londo is uh, is down here, in the dark. There's a hole in the ceiling. This is essentially a cave underneath Firelink Shrine. So, it was obviously inhabited, but the people live here who lived here chose to live in the dark. And it's interesting that these hollows here, are they possibly the survivors of whatever terrible calamity flooded this place? They aren't hostile. And I have a theory about the hostility of hollows, which is that essentially the hollows that you see aren't, um, for lack of a better term, fully hollow. Hollowing is not a binary state. You become more and more and more hollow, and you know, you can be more hollow or less hollow as you, you know, hang on to some degree of sense of purpose. The hollows that you fight in this game have lost almost everything. All they have left is whatever whatever purpose they can scrounge up. So for all of the various, you know, hollow soldiers and so on that you fight, what do they have left? All they have left is the fact that, you know, they were charged to guard this bridge. Not, not this bridge in front of me, but, you know, a bridge. And that was their thing um, when they were alive. Let's see if I can just... Nope, I'm gonna have to go goad them out myself, I suppose. Uh, there we are. That was that one that appears behind you. That's the real, uh, the real threat there. Um, one of the interesting things, again, about the lore of this game and the way it interacts with the mechanics is that since cursed, since cursed things can interact with ghosts. The reason why you use a transient curse is that it's a brief curse, and it curses you so that you can interact with the ghost. If you have a cursed weapon, then that weapon can be used to interact with the ghost through the medium of stabbing. Because the item itself is cursed, so it's interesting, you know, that um, in that instance it's not that it's not that you've cursed yourself. It's that the item was already cursed, and the item is the thing that's doing the interacting, not not the person who's holding it. Um, one of the benefits of the Black Knight Sword is that it can just knock them down in one hit. They uh, can be a real pain to fight if you don't have anything um, that strong. So, one of them... There's only, I think, two cursed weapons in the game. There's the knives that these guys drop. These ghosts drop. Um... As you can see, they wield two of them. One of them dropped one just a moment ago, uh, which I'm sure you've noticed. Uh, and the other one is a specific upgrade weapon used, made using Sif's soul, which is... Uh, is it the Cursed Greatsword of Artorias? I'm not sure. Basically, the way that in this game you make... You make... Um, special weapons out of boss souls is that uh, well I mean is this, a, is this a wall? nope okay it's been quite a long time since I did this zone so I might miss things or I might be a bit slow but uh, yeah ah what was I saying I'm sorry I've got a pounding headache sorry that's not that's not relevant 
it's not relevant. It's irrelevant. Which is a joke that only works if there's an elephant. Oh, that's two swords. <laughs> the jagged ghost blade. That over there is a more powerful kind of ghost. I call her the screaming ghost. I don't really know what the difference is between a screaming ghost and any other kind of ghost. But it's completely ambiguous. <laughs> Um, but the Screaming Ghost screams and uh, has more powerful attacks. That's a fog gate. We'll not go through that until we've had a little bit more of a look around here. So, yeah, hollows. That's what I was talking about. Hollows. So the hollow... Also, as you can... Do you see that over there? There are some real motherfuckers around here. And one of the really frustrating things is that because ghosts are intangible, they can literally hide inside walls. I mean, if you play Dark Souls, you get used to being blindsided by enemies that you couldn't possibly have seen because they come out of a, they, you know, they just they jump round a, a blind turn and then and then punch you in the face, and then the next time you go down that corridor, you know they're there, so you goad them out before aggroing the next guy. But you know, this is how Dark Souls is. You know, once you've you've got used to the fact that there could be there could be corridors you can't see you know, behind blind turns. So you get used to being careful about that, and then you don't get ambushed anymore. So then they introduce a new, uh, a new complication to that. Namely, ghosts that can hide inside the walls themselves. Um, but yeah, if you are paying attention, you can notice them in advance, like I did with that one. So, there are no, uh, there are no mini-bosses in this zone. No secondary bosses or anything like that. Is this... Yep, there we go. That's our first shortcut, I think. Although I can't remember how to get to the other end of it. Yep. And as you can see, because they're ghosts, they have stretchy arms. Like, uh... Not unlike... Oh shit, my... My curse ran out. Oh god, that was dumb. That's dumb, that's dumb. I'm gonna die. No, no, I'm fine. Yeah, one of the frustrating things about the transient curse is it does run out fairly quickly. So you only got a few of them to get through the zone with a few of them with which to get through the zone. There we go. I might try turning the brightness up on this. That's a little bit cheaty, but um I don't like not being able to see what the fuck I'm doing. Ah yes, this is I think this is a shortcut for after we reduce the water maybe or something. Ugh, I can't remember. There is a there is a purpose to this. I just don't remember what it is. Yeah. Anyway, um, this does let you get have the advantage of being able to shoot these guys. Otherwise, they uh, attack up through the floor when you go overhead. So yeah, you're a hollow. All you've got left is the king told me to guard this bridge, and then that becomes. I'm supposed to guard this bridge. That's all you've got left. That's You don't remember who you are, or where you're from, or why you're guarding the bridge. You just remember that you were supposed to guard this bridge, and by god you're going to guard this bridge. Which is why they're hostile, because all they know is guard it. They don't know what they're supposed to guard it from, so they have to guard it from everything. It's kind of a miserable existence, really. Also, fuck ghosts. I hate ghosts. There's a running joke on my favourite podcast, The Kraton Crowbar, that, um... No one has ever had a good time fighting a ghost in a video game. And it's not untrue. It is not untrue. I do quite like that the the, um, the ghost's heads are sort of sticky uppy. <laughs> On, like, their spines are, like, elongated upwards, which is quite strange. But I find it oddly endearing. They remind me of Rock'em Sock'em robots. When they, um, when they get I suppose the term is knocked out since Rock'em Sock'em Robots are supposed to be boxers, but you know, when their head goes. Now, see, that wall there, you can't see there's a ghost, but when you round this corner, a ghost comes out of that wall and sneaks up behind you. And then there's three ghosts down there, and there's a bunch of ghosts in this house. It is a ghost house. Haunted? A haunted house? Haunted, haunted mansion? There's, there's something there, but I can't. I don't quite have it. There it is. Am I... Oh, I think my curse is right. No, I'm alright. I'm still cursed. So yeah, because they've got, like, stretch arm strong lengthy arms, 
they don't even have to come out of the wall to hurt you. They can attack you from within the wall without um, even exposing themselves. So, yep. And uh, I've got to be really careful here, because if I attack them at the wrong angle, I will be falling down to my own death. Maybe I'll just set them on fire. I don't know if magic works... Oh, I didn't need to use two. I don't know if magic works against ghosts unless you're cursed. I think maybe... I think maybe spells and pyromancies and stuff do work on ghosts if you aren't cursed. I think it's just for physical weapons. But uh, don't quote me on that. I think there's a bunch of them in here as well. There's lo basically loads of them in this house, and sometimes, sometimes you can bait them out and sometimes you can't. Yeah, see, that one comes down from above... They've basically got no clip on, which, as anyone who's had to deal with, um, you know, multiplayer servers in, like, 1999 knows. Oh, there's another screaming ghost. I think there's, like, three ghosts that drop down in here. Pop up, I guess, from below. No, nope, only two, and Madam Screamy Scream Scream. I scream, you scream, we all scream because we're ghosts. Also, this is kind of gross. You hear that? That horrible, crunchy, crackling noise? It's like walking on, like, eggshells. Which is not a context in which that phrase is frequently used, I must say. Um, but it's a horrible, horrible noise of those bones crackling away underneath. I think the same sound effect was used in the depths, or the, the deeps, I can never remember what that's actually called. So, ow, fuck, that was close. See? Look, that one's hiding in the wall. Half the time when they're in the wall, you can't even hit them. Um, and... You know, it ruins the durability of your sword, always stabbing walls uselessly. There's a bunch of items to grab around here. Oh, the Cursed Bite Ring. That's where it is! No wonder I didn't have it for when I wanted it earlier. <laughs> so, yeah, you can... Um, you can... Ah, that's my curse running out. I've got to keep an eye out for the for that um that shimmer that zoop zoops in. Zo is zoop a verb? I'm gonna make zoop a verb. That um like ring that zooped in around me. That's my curse wearing off. So they talk about curses as if a curse is a particular kind of a thing, you know. But but really, <laughs> all the curses seem to be very different. The ghosts may be ghosts because of curses, or they may be ghosts because of ghost reasons. You know, any of the reasons that in any folklore a ghost might come to exist, you know? Uh, I see you. Haha, -ha, can't hide from me. But yeah, rock and sock and ghost robots. Quite endearing. It's, and they've got these big grins on their faces, you know? It's all a bit ridiculous. Yeah, so. Because they uh, can attack through the ceiling, you gotta be careful. You might get stabbed from any angle in uh, in New Londo, which is why it is not a popular tourist destination. Can I hit this guy already? Oh, for fuck's sake! That's that's blatantly cheating. Um, actually, is he in the big room? <laughs> Does that mean I can get him if I go in the big room? Um, the other thing is that it's pretty much impossible to tell you've aggroed a ghost until like, until you can see it, which means that it's really easy around here to aggro ghosts through walls and ceilings, and then you get chased by aggro ghosts. So I'm just going to head up this ladder and uh, meet a new individual, and then that will be the end of today's episode. Wow, I remember going through this on my first playthrough of Dark Souls. It took me, like... 15 tries to get to this point. Uh, yeah, so. This guy, does he look familiar? I don't know, probably not, since I haven't actually worn the armor set that he has, but I have his armor set. I'm not going to talk to him because uh, today's episode is. Pr ah, fuck it, let's go. Well, this is a surprise. I get few visitors, save for ghosts. You have the Lord Vessel. Very impressive. I know exactly what your intentions are. You seek the four kings whom I guard over. This 
is the key to the seal. Uh, thanks, guy. The four kings slumber in the deepest chamber of the ruins. Oh, and do not forget I think I skipped a line there. The Whoops. dark wraiths reside in a dark void called the Abyss. But the Abyss is no place for ordinary mortals. Although, long ago, the knight Artorius traversed the Abyss. If you can find him and learn from him, the Abyss may prove surmountable. So one of the things about Dark Souls is that you're never really told where to go. You have to put it together for yourself. And at this point, if you haven't been to that place in Dark Root, you know, Ingward here mentions... Uh, I think this guy's Ingward. I think that's his name. Uh, mentions... The... Mentions Artorias. You might remember, oh, there was an item in Andre's shop that mentioned Artorias. And you go find that, and it's like this crest opens a door. Then you think, oh, there was a door with that crest on it in Dark Root. And then you go open that door, and then you get murdered by bandits. <clears throat> but yeah, no, then you continue on and you find the grave of Artorias and Sif, and what do you get? You get a very useful item in one specific instance, which is here somewhere. There we go. The Covenant of Artorias. This symbolizes Knight Artorias' covenant with the beasts of the abyss. It's wearer, like Artorias himself, can traverse the Abyss. Now, I have a lot to say about what the Abyss is, and um, how it's represented over the different games in the series, but that is all for me, all for today from me. So, uh, it's been lovely seeing you all. Bye!